All right, guys, imagine this. You're scrolling through the news and suddenly you see the headline, NASA has found signs of life on Mars. Your heart skips a beat. I mean, could this finally be it? The discovery we've been waiting for for so long? Well, not so fast. Hold up, wait a minute, something ain't right. What NASA actually found is being called a potential biosignature. That word potential is doing a lot of work here. It doesn't mean we've confirmed life, but it does mean we've uncovered something intriguing enough to make scientists sit up in their chairs. In this video, I'll break down exactly what was discovered, how it was found, why it might be the strongest evidence yet of past microbial life on Mars, what questions still remain, and why this discovery matters for science exploration and the bigger question of whether we are alone in the universe. When I was looking at my YouTube statistics, I found out that only 2% of my viewers are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you enjoy this kind of content, please do subscribe. It's literally free for you to do and it helps me a lot. Thank you and let's get back to the video. So what was the discovery and how did they find it? The story starts in July 2024 when NASA's Perseverance rover was exploring an area in what we call Jezero Crater, known as the Bright Angel Formation. This is a region of layered sedimentary rocks that have long been thought to preserve Mars's watery past. The rover studied a rock dubbed the Cheyava Falls, I believe. I think that's how you pronounce it. I don't know, I could be wrong. Point is, that sample contains some surprising features. Using two instruments that are on the Perseverance rover, the Pixel, an X-ray spectrometer, and Sherlock, which is a laser spectrometer designed to detect organics, scientists identified a mixture of elements and minerals that looked suspiciously like the kinds of patterns we associate with microbial activity on Earth. Suddenly, what had just been another sedimentary rock that we found became a front page discovery on every major news outlet. So what exactly did they see? First, the rock contained organic carbon molecules, chemistry that on Earth is strongly tied to life, but that can also form in non-biological ways, technically. More importantly, the team found unusual textures in the rock that they call leopard spots. These are small zones where different minerals meet, forming sharp chemical reaction fronts. Within these spots were two iron-rich minerals, vivanite, an iron phosphate, and graygite, an iron sulfide. I don't know if I'm pronouncing these right. Again, I'm not a chemist. Don't cook me in the comments, please. Anyway, on Earth, these minerals often form in environments where microbes are actively changing the chemistry, especially in low oxygen, water-rich sediments. And that's the kind of chemistry that microbes use to power their metabolisms, transferring electrons from one compound to another to generate energy. Now, what makes this especially compelling is the combination of ingredients, right? Organics, iron, sulfur, and phosphorus all together arranged in a way that suggests dynamic chemical processes. Even more intriguing, the rock doesn't show evidence of having been cooked at high temperatures or altered by very acidic conditions, which, you know, both of those could have explained the mineral chemistry without life, but here, those abiotic pathways, I guess, seem less likely. And the crazy part is these rocks are relatively young by Mars standards, meaning the window for habitability might have extended further into Mars's history than scientists used to think. In short, this is one of the best contexts yet for arguing something biological might have been at play on Mars. Still, obviously, the scientists have to be careful, and they are. These patterns could also be produced by strictly chemical, non-biological reactions, which is why they stop at calling it potential biosignature. Of course, potential is not proof. To confirm whether this is really evidence of ancient Martian microbes, several things need to happen. So one is isotopic analysis, meaning we have to measure the relative abundance of lighter and heavier atoms of elements like carbon and sulfur. On Earth, life tends to prefer lighter isotopes, right? Leaving behind a pretty recognizable chemical footprint. Right now, Perseverance doesn't really have the capability to measure that in detail. Another step is ruling out all non-biological explanations. Laboratory experiments on Earth can simulate Martian conditions to see if minerals like Vivian Knight and Griegite. Editing Pranav, please put in the, um, you know, somebody saying it. That's not me. They can simulate Martian conditions to see if those kinds of minerals could form without biology under the same conditions. And if they can't, that strengthens the case for life. And, you know, perhaps most importantly, we need to actually bring these samples home. NASA and the European Space Agency, ESA, have long been planning a Mars sample return mission, and findings like this make it 
pretty urgent. Only in Earth laboratories with our most sensitive instruments could we actually settle the question. And even with all these caveats, the discovery matters pretty enormously. It shifts how we think about Mars's past, not just as a place that you know might have been habitable billions of years ago, but as a world that could have supported life later in its history than expected and closer to our history. It also guides future exploration, telling us to look at, you know, clay-rich sediments, to target areas where sharp mineral boundaries preserve chemical activity, and to think carefully about where we drill next. And it matters in broader senses too. Even the possibility of life on Mars challenges us to rethink our place in the cosmos, right? It forces us to act if life could arise independently on two neighboring planets, literally next to us, one on Earth and it happened on Mars at some point in time. Is it actually common in the universe? Are we really not alone in the universe? Could we find aliens and signs of intelligent life? So where does this leave us? I mean, NASA's discovery in the Bright Angel Formation is not the smoking gun that life existed on Mars, but it is the most compelling piece of evidence yet. The mix of organics, mineral reaction fronts, and iron sulfur phosphorus chemistry makes this a pretty crazy candidate biosignature that demands it be studied further. But science is slow and it has to be cautious or else we'd be concluding random things all the time. We need isotopic confirmation, more samples, and eventually analysis back on Earth. And if this all holds up, it could be and would be one of the most profound discoveries in history of mankind. For now though, it's a pretty tantalizing clue. Thanks for watching. Let me know in the comments what you think. Are we closer than ever to like proving life once existed on Mars? Or do you think the chemistry will actually just turn out to be abiological or non-biological? Anyway, thank you for watching guys. If you enjoyed this kind of video, hit the like button, subscribe for more deep dives into space science and space news. Keep expanding the universe and see you next time guys. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free and you can change your mind at any point in time and it really helps me out as well.